Hello, everyone. Here is my disclaimer. Any information you hear on this show, the views may not represent the views of the station or the host. And my name is Betsy Wurzel. I am host of Chatting with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio, where our mantra is to educate, enlighten, and entertain. Folks, I'm so excited. I know my guests are so phenomenal, and today is no exception. My guest, oh my goodness, I'm obsessed with his show on YouTube. My guest today is Hal Miller. He's from Michigan. He has this wonderful, entertaining, educational, informative show, Sharks Happen, on YouTube, which started in April 2021. And before I forget, I don't want to forget to mention this, Hal also has really cool merchandise that you're going to have to check out. It has sharks happen on it. It's hats, pens, all kinds of shirts, uh, hoodies, all kinds of merchandise. The links will be in the blog, so make sure you read the blog, folks. And I want to introduce Hal, who is host of Sharks Happen. Welcome, Hal, to Chatting with Betsy. Hi, Betsy. Thanks for having me. Glad to be on. Uh Oh, you are welcome. Well, you've had a very uh, varied career. You were a machinist, a realtor, you started your own business. And now since April 2021, you have Sharks Happen, uh, which I I am. I'm obsessed. The first time I saw Sharks Happen, (laughs) folks, I was like, and I, I believe we meet people for a reason. I said, this show is great. What's the chances of me having Hal on my show? I said, well, let me go. Ask him, and I'm so glad you said yes. How did you come about thinking of doing your show, which is very successful? And congratulations on that. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I, uh, um, it's kind of funny how that came about. Um, there was a shutdown. We were locked down here in Michigan where I live. We were locked down for a long time. They wouldn't let us go over to cabins. They wouldn't let us go out. They wouldn't let us do basically anything. And I started watching a lot of YouTube at the time, and I was watching a lot of political YouTube channels right after the election. And I was like, well, you know, doing a YouTube channel, that would be kind of nice. So by the end of 2020, I knew I wanted to do a channel. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what it would be on. If I went on something that I'm really good at, it would be politics. But I would, you know, get struck down like a lot of these channels were doing in politics. So I decided that was the wrong thing to do. And in March, I went down to the Keys to see my father, and we were sitting around, me, him, and a friend of his, and we were having a simple discussion, and we, it, they brought up that I won't go in the water. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going in any salt water. And they're like, why? And I said, because there's sharks out in that water. And they said, sharks aren't worried about people, and sharks will spit people out. So I started throwing out some of the attacks I remember from when I was a kid when I started reading this and explaining to them how many of these Sharks had eaten people that I know of when I don't even look at this. As, so then on my way home from the Keys, the show kind of just, uh, it's a 21-hour drive. I, I do it myself, and the show kind of evolved on my ride back home. Uh, so then I decided that it was going to be sharks, and then I had to go ahead. I had no equipment. I just went ahead and bought all the equipment and did a quick five shows. And then I stopped because real real estate here in Michigan after the shutdown uh, it, it was very hard to get something because I had started so late in the game. I didn't have a big clientele, wanted to find something else to do. So I started door dashing to, to, to give me time to figure out what I could do on my channel blew up. So then I had a channel to do and I had so many people watching that I decided that I was going to do it full time. And it's been great since then. Well, I'm so glad that I found you and I'm glad you're doing your show. I find it uh, fascinating and learning so much. Now, you were interested in sharks since the age of 10, and you live in Michigan, so I know there's no ocean around there. Um, how did you get interested? Like, what it, what sparked your interest in sharks at, at that age? Yeah, um, every year we would go up north. My, my grandmother had uh, land up north, so we would go up north and we would go fishing. And uh, I probably did this from four, five, six years old. And I know I was told, I know myself, I probably asked, you know, how big do these fish get? And I was told about sharks. 
I remember when Jaws came out, I was already well aware of sharks when Jaws came out. So uh, I was always fascinated by them. And I was fascinated by things I feared. So um, it was basically tornadoes, orcas, and sharks. And it was mostly great whites, large sharks. Uh, You know, small sharks have never interested me. It's the large ones. So, um, you know, as soon as I got into that, then I just was struck by how huge they were. And at about age 10, I ran into a book, uh, I think it was by H. David Baldrige. He's my favorite shark research analysis uh, analyst there is. And I ran across that book, and ever since then, I have been just fascinated by attacks, and I can't get enough of them as far as going through the stories, finding out exactly what the shark did, um, why, trying to figure out why they're doing it. Um, he was doing the same thing back in 1968 when he headed the uh, – shark attack file by the Navy, H. David Baldrige, but he only had a 1,000 attacks he was looking at, and he was looking at all attacks, kind of like they do nowadays in marine biology. They look at all sharks together when I think that, you know, under six feet, I can only find two fatalities from sharks under six feet, and one of those was a shark jumped in a boat and bit a guy who was stranded at sea who would have survived that attack. So, I don't know why people are lumping in all sharks when most don't kill. When you get to six feet and over, those are the ones you got to worry about. Those are the ones we should be discussing after people are unfortunately attacked and, and pass away from the attacks. So that's, uh, that's kind of where it led to after that. But, yeah, as soon as I found out about sharks, I was just fascinated. I, I am too, and I live in New Jersey. And I remember the first time I went to the beach, I was petrified, petrified, of uh, being in the ocean and sharks. And when I went to the Bahamas, um, 1979, my father was like, watch out for sharks, watch out for sharks. And I can't see without my glasses, Hal, and I can't hear, it <laughs> seems like. So I was always afraid a shark could be coming and I wouldn't hear the lifeguard or see the shark till it was too late. But I'm fascinated with sharks. My husband would, he would tease me when I used to watch about you know, Shark Week. He would say, why are you watching that all the time? It's the same thing. And I said, because I, I like it. But what I, I really like about your show, first of all, I think you have a great voice. And just the way you tell the story, there's just something about the way you, you share the story. And I can't stop watching it. And I just, I learned a lot, really, from watching your show. Like, I didn't know there was black tip uh, sharks. And I yep. didn't know that sharks were so close to the um, shore. Like, yeah. people getting attacked in, like, three feet of water. I mean, that's not that deep. Yeah. That's no, scary. No, and that's, that's one of the things that surprises, uh, I think, most people, is <laughs> that you can get a large shark 10 feet in two and a half, three feet of water, and they ask, how does that happen? With the, I'm sure the shark is touching the bottom of the water, uh, the, the seafloor at times, but they can increase their, I believe it's their liver oil that they, they let out that lets them be buoyant. So to be able to float on top of the water as they do, they just release as much liver oil as they can, and they kind of float there. So they can be in very shallow water, even shallower than they are big. And that's how they get away with it. So if you're in three feet of water, you still have to worry about a 15-foot shark maybe coming in at you. So that's why I don't like the water. <laughs> yeah. I won't, well, I haven't been to a beach in, in many years, and I won't be going in uh, the water anytime soon. As a matter of fact, in New York, and this is the first time that I even heard of this, there were a couple of shark attacks in New York. And I'm thinking, well, they're that close to New York. And then can't be that far off in New Jersey. So, right, right. You, don't to, you know, you don't have to tell me twice not to go in the water. <laughs> That's for sure. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, New Jersey's <laughs> a, a tough one because they're in an area there where, where the water gets colder. So it's usually just the great whites that you have to worry about and other different sharks. But you don't have the, the triple threat like you have over in Australia where you have the bull, the great white, and the tiger. You have to worry about all three of them. Um, I think the United States were pretty well off as far as not having all three of the groups on the same beach in most places. So it makes it a little bit uh, less likely for there to be fatalities off the U.S. coast than off of, let's say, South Africa or Australia. At least that's what I'm seeing so far. Yes, they seem to have a lot more shark attacks. And when I look at people, 
on their paddle boards. I'm like, are they crazy to be on a little paddle board or little kayak out on the grand big ocean where a whale could flip you, a great white could flip your your paddle board, your kayak right over? I mean, no, I'd want to be on a yacht. <laughs> It is. It yeah. is close. I went down to the Keys and my sister went out. She wanted to go out kayaking. And this was probably uh, maybe this March or, yeah, probably this March when I was down there. And she asked me if I wanted to go kayaking. And I didn't have to think about it. I just said, no. <laughs> I'm not going yeah. out of water. <laughs> being that close to the water. I don't. I can't even watch the videos. And that's the other thing is when they have videos of, like, uh, divers that are down in the water. So, like, my videos of my sharks, anything in the water like that just scares me. Because for some reason I think I can't see everywhere. And I'm worried about where I can't see. And it, it even happens when I watch the videos. So, you know, I'm not just afraid of sharks in the ocean. I'm pretty much afraid of anything large in there all the way down to those little microscopic little uh, uh, jellyfish they have over there. I think in Australia they will go ahead and uh, they can kill you, and they're tiny. You can't even see them. So uh, there's too much in that water that I don't know about that I don't want to know about. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I, I'm right there uh, with you, Hal. I, I love your segment. Folks, I really, I'm going to put the link in the blog for uh, Sharks Happen, which I highly recommend everyone to, to watch. I love your segment, What Were They Thinking? Or I think you even have one, You're an Idiot. <laughs> yes. Yes. I have, a, I have a few different ending segments, and those are my two favorites. So what were you thinking, sir? Probably my favorite because – I'm trying to figure out what what they're thinking in the first place. You got people trying to ride sharks. You got people lifting sharks up to take a selfie. Uh, just a lot of things you shouldn't be doing that I can't even believe they're they're doing in the first place. So they end up in an ending segment of either you're an idiot or or uh, the what were you thinking? But I also have um, a, another ending I like, which is uh, what you've been eating, shark. That I just started recently. That. A lot of times they'll catch a shark and they'll find body parts in there and, you know, you don't know who the victim is. So I just put that into a segment of what you've been eating and that's how we'll cover those. So, uh, yeah, the ending segments are, are a way to lighten up uh, a pretty uh, intense show at times and with the gruesome attacks uh, that tend to happen with these large sharks. I, I love when you start cracking up. It was I think it was your last show that I, I had a watch where the guy went in after his hat and got oh, yeah. attacked by a shark. You're like, I wouldn't go in there to, to get my hat. I wouldn't either. I mean, really, what are they thinking to jump in the ocean to get their hat? I mean, yep. you could always replace a hat. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I can replace anything that goes into that ocean. But to swim out there and just for a hat, I was like, that is just crazy. But I think my favorite one is uh, – there was a captain of a ship, I think this was back in the 1800s, and he had a strong Austrian on board, and he was mad at the strong Austrian, so he had had words with them, and the Austrian threw him overboard, and he got eaten by a shark. Oh. Um, that one is just one of the craziest ones, because, you know, I, I told the people, I said, you know, that you, he's, he's the Austrian known for his strength, and says, I said, that guy... You don't go ahead and tell that guy you're angry. That guy, you write it down on a note, you put it in an envelope, and you burn it. <laughs> so, yeah. Some of those stories are just amazing. But, uh, you know, the more and more I get into it, sharks jumping in boats, uh, sharks jumping in boats, uh, biting people. A shark grabbed a 10-year-old boy off a boat and grabbed him, pulled him into the water. Uh, luckily, he wasn't uh, injured. It, it put teeth marks into his big poofy. It was kind of cold out, so he had a winter jacket on. And it sounds like the teeth just got into the jacket is all. But, I mean, the things that that, that happen out on that water, um, you know, I go out there and fish, and now I start wondering, you know, is there a shark going to be jumping over here or what? <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, it's crazy. Like, I, I know from watching, you know, Shark Week, I've seen where they had the sharks, you know, jump out, but I never heard of a thinner shark that you had showed yeah. on your show. I mean, how they just spin up in the air. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I would definitely have to be either on a yacht or a cruise ship <laughs> to be <laughs> out on the open water. Um, and, and you know what? I, I think a lot of people are under the impression 
that dolphins will protect them from sharks. But that's not true, yeah. is it? No, that's not true at all. Dolphins will be swimming around with sharks. Um, it doesn't matter what kind of sharks, great whites, uh, smaller sharks, bull sharks. You'll see bull sharks. I just covered a, an attack where a gentleman was out, and he was in Florida. He was going to hunt for the lobster, so you go down and pick him up by, with your hands. He saw a pot of dolphins, so he jumped into the water. And as soon as he looked down, a uh, bull shark was coming up. And I'm about a seven-foot bull shark. And he kicked that one in the head, but another one was off to the other side of him, bit his leg, other leg, as he was kicking that one. So, uh, the, you know, if you see dolphins, if you see pinnipeds, it does not mean that, uh, it does not mean that you're definitely going to see a shark if you see, like, a seal or that you're not going to see a shark if you see a dolphin. Um, they can be around anything. So, you know, I'd be concerned if I saw dolphins. I wouldn't sit there and think that, no, if you see the biggest dolphin, if you see that dolphin, you're going to be fine. That's that orca. And if you see one of those, then, yes, that's the dolphin that the, the sharks are worried about, So even the great whites. So that's the only dolphin I'd be feeling comfortable in the water around on the water with is an or- orca. That means there's no sharks. Oh, well, thanks. I didn't uh, know that because I heard of stories, I'm sure you have too, where uh, there were swimmers and dolphins circled around them to protect them from sharks. And I think that gives people a false sense of security. I would not go uh, in a water <laughs> near, near dolphins or seals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, that has happened, and they are intelligent creatures. And dolphins are kind of weird. Um, I don't think um, – I can't remember the, the YouTube channel it is, Geographic something. Um, but this gentleman does a show, and he talks about dolphins and dolphins in general and what jerks they are. They're not, they're not friendly animals. And, um, you know, we're just lucky that they're intelligent and they know not to mess with humans. For some reason, dolphins and – and orcas don't mess with us, but they can do a lot of damage to other sea creatures, and sometimes they do it just for fun. They're not a, a pleasant animal. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, people think they are from the old TV series. I'm dating myself here, Flipper. <laughs> I used to watch Flipper. Um, yeah. You think of a dolphin as, you know, a very sweet, docile creature, you know. Um, but, say that's something that I just learned from you, Hal. Thank you. I think yeah, um, yeah. you are, you know what I like about you? I, I love what I love about watching you, Hal, you're so honest and, uh, and how you do the story and authentic. But I, I like when you say, of course, they are died of, you know, there's water in your lungs. They had drowning. That's because the shark pulled them in underneath that water. They wouldn't have yeah. water in your lungs if the shark didn't pull them uh, under um, some of these shark attacks are so uh, uh, brutal that you know I watch it and I go, oh man, that's really gross. But I gotta watch some more. And uh, you don't show the attack, which I want to tell people you don't see the attack. But the way Hal describes it, you feel that you're right there. I mean, you do such a good job with that. Um, have you had any, like, training with radio or, or TV? Because you're just a natural. Uh, no, no. I, actually, I, I've never done anything like that. And uh, um, this is the first time trying it. I used to not like my voice. I used to hear it all the time. I actually was in a band and stuff and could hear myself sing, could hear myself talk. And I never liked my voice. And a lot of people <laughs> like my voice from my show. It, it surprises me. Um, maybe it's the way that I talk. Um, it's kind of straightforward, doesn't add a lot of extra words in there to take up time. I try to, you know, use as little words as possible for, for the best effect. So uh, it seems to work out. I come from a family of just natural storytellers, so we all can do this where we sit around and, I, you know, I sometimes think I should sit down and write a book just from the dumb luck that I kind of have. Somebody put a word to it in my in my comment section on my show, but I can't use that here, but it described my luck that I had <laughs> and some of the things that happened. And, and it probably adds to where I don't get shocked or surprised of, of a lot of things is because I know what can happen. And I, I guess I'm not shocked by what does happen anymore. 
Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, I think you have a great voice, and I think a lot of people don't like their voice. I don't like my voice either. That's why I was <laughs> I like, think you have me a great talking. Voice. You have a great voice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Like, who wants to listen to my voice? Um, <laughs> but it's funny. I don't think anyone likes their voice, uh, Hal, but I just, you know, watching your show, it is, it, it is an educational show. And I think it makes people more conscious, more aware. You know, I should not be swimming near jetties. I shouldn't go where there's seals. But people do such stupid things. Um, yes. That's yes, why I like do. your segment. You know, what were they thinking? Or you know, you're an idiot because who in the world wants to take a selfie with the shark? And uh shark could just turn and, and bite. Yeah, fold themselves in half to bite you. I mean, they can, they're like all cartilage. They, they can turn back on themselves, which is why those seals always jump for the tails. Uh, as far as the show, though, that's one of the biggest, um, I think when people f- first see the show and m- maybe watch one or two episodes, they start thinking, why, well, I get the question a lot, why am I demonizing these sharks? And it's completely the opposite of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm letting people know what these sharks are capable of and what they will do and have done. And I think that there's no problem with people knowing that. Now, I'm not doing that to tell them that sharks are bad. I'm doing that to tell them that sharks are sharks. The only difference is that it attacked a person instead of its normal prey. So we shouldn't be treating the shark differently because the shark is being the same. It's the people that are going the water where they don't belong and they keep going back. I mean, these surfers, I've, I've realized, at least I have a theory that these surfers, the sharks are biting the surfers out of being mad that they're in the area. And they don't care to eat them. They usually don't go through and try to eat them. It's an anger issue with the sharks. I think it's the same with boats, boards, kayaks. And uh, when you find that out, you can be like, oh, well, you know, that's that's great. The shark isn't trying to eat you. But then again, that's a large shark. That's a great white. It, it's, you know, one bite could usually do you in. So uh, I, I have a spreadsheet that goes with the with the show. I'm just updating it now. Um, marine biologists like to talk about there's, you know, one in 15 uh, attacks are, are fatal. But by my stats that I'm looking at, it's it's near one in two. So they need to separate. I, I don't understand how science can put all these small fish with large sharks that kill and then give you the stats with all of them together because the stats are so different. If it's one out of 15 and then it's almost one out of two, there's something wrong with the way that they're doing sharks. And uh, back when I, back I, I would think 20 years ago, I was still really into this, still look, reading all my books, and everything changed. The uh, the narrative changed to where everything's a mistake and, uh, you know, it's accidental. It's rare. Well, no, it's rare, but it's inevitable. Somebody's going to get bit. Somebody's going to get bit once a week on average. It's a matter of, is it going to be a large shark or a small shark? If it's a small shark. You're probably going to the hospital for some stitches. If it's a large one right now, it looks like you got a one out of two chance to survive. So, uh, you know, I don't think anybody's doing the public a service right now trying to protect them or at least give them the information to make their own judgment on what they should do. Some people are still surprised sharks attack people. And it's like, you know, that's going to happen if you're in the water. It's just a matter of that. It's a, it's a reverse lottery, but for the person that gets bit, it doesn't matter how many millions of people it did it out of. It still did it. Yeah. And I like how on your show you uh, explain that. And now I don't think, in my opinion, that you are demonizing sharks at all. I think you're informing people. You're telling people, you know, sharks are doing what what they're doing. And I never thought about, until you brought it up in your show, sharks being territorial. You know, they're protecting the territory. We're in their home. We go into that ocean. We're in their home. And I love how you say, when what you're saying, Hal, when you're more afraid of the sharks than they were of you, something to... Yes. Like that, you say? Yes. Um, yeah. I'm petrified. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, <laughs> I yeah, definitely. That, 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 Go ahead. You're, you are more more afraid of, much more afraid of sharks than they are of you. That is a play. That's on, it. Uh, growing up up north with my grandma and my, my parents up there, you know, you're, you're outside eating and bees are all over. And 
I hate bees. I still don't like bees. I've been stung plenty of times, and, yeah, it hurts a little bit, and I still don't like them. And they would tell me all the time, these bees are much more afraid of you than they're. I'm 100 times the size of that bee, and it's up in my grill. There is no way that bee is more afraid of me than I am of it. So that's where I came up with that saying at the end of that. It was uh, a little slap at some saying they were telling me of bees, about bees when I was growing up. I I like that. I also like when you uh, talk about, you know, uh, it is a a 10 to per date or it's not. Um, Could you explain that? Because to me, per date would be they just took that body. They wanted, they were just set out when they got a hold of that person to, to take that person. Sometimes I don't think it, it is a mistake. I think they meant to, right. you know, see, well, my dad used to say, yeah, they'll take a bite. And then if they are hungry, they'll take some more. That's right. So my He's dad absolutely say, right. That's what they're doing. And uh, you never know when you run into that. I think it's a desperate shark, that eat, especially with a great white. It's a desperate shark that ends up eating a person. And uh, I've ran into too many where they just bite the person and they leave. They don't even get hit. They don't do anything. They bite them and leave. Um, I'm wondering sometimes are these sharks just playing with people? They swim up, grab them by the leg. All of a sudden, the people don't even, they think their buddy's pulling on their leg. They look, and their leg's in the mouth of a 15-foot shark as it's swimming off with them in its mouth. So, uh, you know, these the, the territorial behaviors, I didn't realize how prevalent it is, but with large sharks, it seems that um, territorial is the most reason for a shark to attack. Uh, to feed, it's, it's a lot less. Uh, it happens a lot less. So an attempt to predate is the shark attacking you, but it's going to keep attacking you, uh, even with rescuers that are trying to help you out of the situation. The shark keeps coming at you. I just covered one where the shark circled three boys. Uh, It had already bitten the one boy in the leg, and then it came in and bit that same boy again. These sharks usually stick with the same wounded person. It came in and bit him again, and he had two other boys with him, and then others came in and got him out of the water. Well, that went down as an attempt to predate because it already bit him and was coming back to get him again. And others had to come in and get him out of there. Now, there's situations where it comes in, a lot of surfers, bites you once, and it heads on its way. Um, most of the time, it, it's just the one bite. It doesn't remove any limbs. It doesn't remove any flesh. It lets go. Uh, might hold you underwater part of the time I might hold the board under the water part of the time I don't think that it really matters or cares and most surfers surfboard attacks now I consider them territorial and the shark has no intention of even eating you at all Uh, unfortunately a lot of them end up fatalities they end up with a you know a severed artery or severed limb and they end up you know not making it but it's not the intention of the shark so in my stats I'm keeping uh, track of fatalities and actually if the shark wanted to consume. So a lot of people that survived still are ending up where the shark wanted to consume them because it, you know, just wouldn't go away and somebody had to come over and rescue them. Um, they get kind of crazy with, you know, the sharks, how stubborn they are. They'll go and ram boats that are trying to uh, to rescue the survivors out of there. So it depends, you know, I'm going by all the all the stories we've gone over 400 here and i've probably gone over about three or 400 uh, to prepare for future shows but everything i'm seeing uh, says that attempt to predate when the shark wants to eat you it is very seldom so that's a that's a good thing and that's where i came up with a ketchup sandwich uh, analogy for a shark that eats a person especially a great white that eats a person doesn't want to but it's going to eat that before it's going to eat let's say a manatee Sharks don't touch manatees for some reason. So uh, they will touch us, and it happens. But an attempt to predate, that, that, that's probably one of the biggest uh, issues on the show uh, as far as controversial because I am keeping it so that I'm not throwing things in there that are questionable as far as an attempt to predate. It has to be pretty certain in my mind by behaviors of attacks prior. So um, it's just a stat I want to keep to find out how many times – Right now, it looks like one out of three attacks by large sharks, they want to eat you. Um, But I haven't gone through and ran the numbers. It's just by what I'm seeing uh, on my spreadsheet right now. 
and this will all change, but we're getting into law of large numbers where um, we're getting pretty close to where these percentages aren't going to change very much, even though we have, you know, a couple thousand more to go. Um, I don't think there's going to be much change in the percentages, and the percentages are a lot higher than I thought, but it's probably because I was hearing uh, the percentages that you hear from the marine biologists of how rare it is, one out of 15. Um, no, it's one out of two almost. So, uh, you know, talking two different worlds of two different sharks, and off of Florida mostly you have small sharks. It's the, the shark attack capital of the world, so maybe that skews their perception. But uh, they knew what I did about shark attacks elsewhere, then they kind of changed their views on it. So at least they should change what they're telling the public because the public deserves truth. And they're not getting that anywhere. It's not just in what I'm dealing with. It's, it's, it's in everything. Uh, You've got people out there that are just talking without any backup. Um, I decided that I wanted to do this show, and I'm going to cover these attacks, and I wanted to cover these attacks in a way that nobody can go through afterwards and find anything else or find that something's wrong on it and make sure that this is going to be the record and nobody will be able to find anything that I couldn't find. So if I do that, I do my job right. Yeah, well, you do a, a great job. I think it's fascinating. When there's a group of people in the water, and why does the shark, like, zoom in on one particular person? Like those three boys. I saw that show. Um, you know, they just zoom in. It seems like they just zoom in on, on somebody. Yeah, Um one of, one of the things that had me thinking about that very thing is a recent attack, a, a, a rare one. People were feeding bull sh- uh, nurse sharks. They were feeding nurse sharks. I think this is over in the Caribbean, maybe the Bahamas. Um, very recent, the last couple months. And a young boy swam out to join them, and three of the nurse sharks came over. A shark that doesn't attack people and pretty much tore his leg up. And it made me wonder the same thing, because I've always, we've all, uh, my viewers have had the same thing. How are they picking, we all know that they go back to the same person injured, but we're all wondering the same thing as you is, how do they pick somebody? And this issue with that kid brought up this thing. Um, I ran a shop in mid-90s, and my father, actually it was in uh, early 2000s, I hired my father, we had a shop together, and then it went under I hired him to work with me, and I had hired this kid to do some work. And, you know, we do grinding, and once you grind a part, it kind of looks a little bit mirrorish. It's got some lines in it, but it looks really nice. Well, this kid could touch the parts, and instantly it looked like a fingerprint uh, blotter was done to the part. His, his fingers would rust the part instantly and put his whole fingerprint onto the parts. You have to grind it off. So there's some kind of a acidic imbalance or something going on coming out of his skin. And it made me wonder, is that possibly going on with the sharks? They're so sensitive that they might be able to pick up, a, you know, some kind of a different an acidity of what comes out of our, what we sweat. Um, I wish we could find out, and I'm hoping maybe, maybe something like that uh, will be discovered through what I'm doing here and going through all this. The only problem there is, uh, you know, with the, with the medical privacy there's no way you're really going to be able to tell if somebody actually had something like that but it's, it's making me wonder is there something that's going on maybe chemically with our bodies that is doing it yeah yeah i i wonder that too i i interviewed a guy last year from california can't think of his name right now a california a shark lab out in um in southern california and he said that you know, like uh, jewelry is attracted. I don't know. Sharks are attracted to jewelry. It's shiny. Um, maybe it's something that they have on. But if somebody's in a wetsuit, they would all kind of look the same. But maybe they are throwing off a scent, and we don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, like I said, the, the the nurse shark thing from a little bit ago, because everybody's sitting around and they're feeding them, and then this kid swims out, and three of them head over and attack them. Uh, made me wonder. I, I just don't know for sure. Yeah, that's. Uh, I always found that fascinating too. A matter of fact, a woman from Pennsylvania was just killed. 
uh, in the Bahamas in the shark oh, attack. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that. Oh, um, I said, oh, I'm glad I didn't see any when I was there. I, oh, I'm I, telling you, I, 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 I actually went to uh, <clears throat> Bud and Mary's when I was down in the Keys a couple weeks ago, and there was an attack we had covered that had happened there. A woman jumped off the docks, a girl jumped off the dock in the afternoon, and a shark immediately bit her. And I'm there filming the area. I haven't put this clip in, in my video yet, but... Uh, you know, I'm I'm at the dock, and I'm just filming in between boats, showing out at a dock across. And I look down in the water, and there's five or six nurse sharks, big ones, like six-footers down there <laughs> swimming around. So I was able to get my own footage of some nurse sharks while I was there. But, uh, yeah, you know, I don't I don't want to run into a shark anywhere. <laughs> it's just like you yeah. said. It's a good thing they're not there. I don't, I don't want to see them. It was nice to see them from that ledge. I was up about three feet if I'm on a boat. I wouldn't mind seeing them, um, depending. I mean, I don't want to see a huge great white when I'm out there on a boat. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I've been watching, because I like the uh, the um, YouTube channel. My, my TV's broken. I haven't replaced it so much in YouTube a lot. And out in California, you see these great whites, and they might be juvenile baby whites swimming very close to the shore and uh yeah. with the surfers and the i would be like oh no <laughs> uh no i would not go in there and like so close like one video i saw and i don't, don't even remember the name of the show the shark was actually almost on the sand oh yeah oh yeah um i've covered a couple of them I think two attacks where uh, one, it chased the woman right up out of the water. So it followed her out of the water onto the beach. And then another one, and this one, when I was on my honeymoon out in Rockport, Massachusetts, um, I'm out there standing there by the, by the water. And there's a, there's a hurricane on the way in. We were ending our honeymoon and the hurricane's on the way in. So the water's looking all gray and sharky. And I wouldn't get very close to the surf because this one woman was walking along the water with her boy, and she saw something out of the corner of her eye, a dark shape, and she lifted up her little maybe three-, four-year-old kid, lifted him up, and that shark went right underneath him. So, uh, you know, they do watch you when you're on shore, too, and those sharks that when I was standing there filming the other day, they were watching me while I was on that on that uh, side of the dock. So uh, they do pay attention to what's going on inside and outside of the water, which is, you know... I don't like that because they got an advantage on me inside of the water. And outside of the water, it really doesn't matter if you're in the water because you can't really do anything. That's the whole problem with the shark is we have no defenses. I mean, even if you have defenses, they're not going to work all the time. I've seen uh, that it works maybe 50% of the time to ward off an attack. And then 40% of that time, it doesn't do anything. And then 10% of the time, it makes the shark go crazy on you. So... Um, it's just a bad situation, and what, what it's looking like is in shallows, like you're saying. Uh, you run into a large shark, and you're a swimmer in the shallows, you're in trouble. A large shark, and you're, I mean, if you're a swimmer, but if you're a surfer in the shallows and a large shark comes up, you've got a lot better chance of surviving. Part of that is due to the board being there to take part of the bite, but the other part is due to, I think, a, just a territorial attack to get you out of its water instead of going ahead and trying to all out eat you. But I think if a large shark is coming into a, a beach, um, I think that's what happened to a woman. Maybe it's the Bahamas one, but they said it was an awful large shark in about three feet of water that came in to get them. That big shark is coming into a, to a busy beach lookout because uh, that's, where, that's where the problems seem to be. Yeah, yeah, and it seems like, um, I don't know, they say that climate change and the, the waters, temperature of the waters, that the great whites of, and other sharks are coming uh, closer to the shore. Um, I just, good thing I don't go to the beach because I would not have went this summer, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, it seemed like a busy summer. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I never heard of sharks attacking in New York um, other than, you know, the story like behind Jaws of uh, these boys getting attacked in an inlet uh, in right, New Jersey, right. way, you know, way back. Um, and, you know, I think it's Australia. 
they had the uh, sharks that could go into the fresh water. Yeah, yeah, they, they have, have they have sharks that can go into fresh water here too. The the bull shark uh, can go into very very mild brackish water, which is almost fresh water, and uh, they tend to go into the mild brackish water to have their pups, so that other sharks are not eating their pups, and that's how they end up uh, keeping their numbers up. Is they take their take and have their babies. Uh, where other sharks aren't going to go. And that's kind of crazy that a shark has, you know, developed the ability to do something like that because it's uh, uh, clearly a huge advantage where um, most of the fish that are in mild brackish water are not going to be sharks that would, you know, eat your young. So those bull sharks, they figured something out there. (laughs) Yeah, and they are uh, very uh, aggressive. Uh, uh, Hal, thank you for coming on. I so enjoy talking to you about your show. And um, Sharks Happen, folks. You've got to check it out on YouTube. You will love it. I'm telling you, you will love it. Um, Hal, give the um, – I know it will be in the blog, but where they can get your uh, – check out your clothing line, which is really cool. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to give you the sharkshappen.etsy.com, and that has uh, – oh, I'm sorry, sharkshappen2, T-O-O, at Etsy, no, point dot Etsy.com, and that's the international store. I also have sharkshappen.com, and that is my website. That has some T-shirts and hats that I had made up, some pens, and you can get some stuff on there. But also on sharkshappen.com, my website, you can scroll down, and I have my spreadsheet on there and a little quick stat analysis on there. Um, it's free to anybody. You don't have to sign up for anything. You can just go on there and click on it. And you can go through and see for yourself. Um, there's, Like I said, there's all kinds of columns, but you want to pay attention to that uh, fatality column and to the attempt per date and you'll get a good idea of percentages and how different it is with large sharks than when you talk about all sharks. Um, So sharkshappen.com and sharkshappen2.etsy.com, those are your two stores. And thank you so much for having me on. I had a great time talking with you, Betsy, and I look forward to maybe speaking to you with you again. Yes, I would love to have you on again. You're so funny because I have to tell you this, folks. (laughs) Hal sent me his short bio. And he's not on social media. <laughs> and I thought that was funny because you have a show, but you're not, you know, on Facebook or, or, you know, anything like that. And you stopped watching TV. And I thought that was um, <laughs> uh, funny, too, because I stopped watching TV since mine died. I really don't feel a need to have one, really. No, I, I, you don't need that in your life. I think everybody should turn off TVs, turn off news, turn off all that. Um, go to the YouTube, pick and choose what you want to put in your mind. Uh, it'll change your life. Turn that TV off. It took me until getting ready for football about a few years ago. But it's been about three years since I stopped watching TV. I've never been happier. I don't wake up. I used to be on Facebook. I don't wake up and I'm angry about things I'm seeing there. You've got to give yourself a shot for a good day. And the best way to do that is to keep all those outside influences that don't matter. Because all you're going to hear is the negative on TV. And when you go outside your house and you talk to people, you don't know whether they're right, left, what they are. You usually get along with them. So get out of the TV and get out of the, you know, the mass messaging and start talking to your neighbors more. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, I'm a, well, I went on Facebook seven years ago, but that was really to join uh, support groups. And then, of course, with my show, I, I post my show on, on Facebook. But that's why teens are, and young people are having trouble today is because of the social media influence. I mean, it could be good and it could also be negative, but I get tired of hearing the news. I shut it off. I hear it in the morning, I'll hear it in the evening on the radio, and that's it. I don't need to keep hearing that same thing over and over again. But I want to thank you, Hal, for coming on, uh, folks. Oh, and another thing you have to – why you have to watch Sharks Happen, because Hal looks like Michael Keaton to me. <laughs> <laughs> I told him that. <laughs> so uh, you have to watch this this channel. I mean, it's really – I just loved it. I, as soon as I saw it, and it's like a, over a year old, I'm thinking, how come I didn't see this before? 
But whenever I see something, it's for a reason, or meet someone, it's for a reason. And folks, just to teach you a lesson, I say, what's the chances of hell coming on my show? Well, I won't know until I ask. And you know what? You won't know until you ask a question. Don't be afraid to ask. It's either yes or no. Maybe you could have a maybe. But don't be afraid to, you know, ask a question, um, something that I wouldn't have done in my younger years. <laughs> but as I'm getting older, I'm getting bolder. <laughs> that could be good or maybe not. I don't know. But. I am getting uh, much more um, bold and just, you know, reaching out to people. But thanks for coming on, Hal. Folks, please read the blog that Jeannie White, who's station manager, she writes. Thank you, Jeannie, for that and producing the show. I want to thank Lillian Caldwell, for CEO of Apache World Talk Radio, for making this all possible. Thanks for listening. And uh, please share the show. And if you know anyone who's interested in sharks, Definitely share this show with them. Tell them about Sharks Happen because I, I really do like it. I watch it. I'm Actually, I watch it every night, Hal, because there's shows that I didn't see since I just started to watch it. So I've been, been <laughs> watching uh, Sharks Happen, and Hal was really nice, and he mentioned me on his last show that he was coming on Chatting with Betsy, so that was really nice. And uh, good luck um, with your clothing line and uh, your stores, and uh, much success to your show. And I'm going to keep watching. I've uh, subscribed, and I want to recommend to the audience, you know, hit that like button and subscribe to Sharks Happen. Um, I I can't stop um, watching it. So every night I watch an episode or two, and (laughs) I I don't know, maybe I am a little gruesome, like, oh, that's gross, but I keep wanting to hear more. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's, and it is, it's very informative. I learned more about sharks uh, watching Hal's show. Um, really makes you more, aw- I think your show, Hal, makes people more aware to me, I mean, in my opinion, about the environment. When you're going into that water, you are in the shark's home. And that's yeah. their territory. They're going to protect it. And we are visitors. We're visiting their home. We have to keep that in mind. And um, right. much luck to you. And thank you so much for doing your show, Sharks Happen. And um, thanks for, for coming on again. I really appreciate it. Um, well, folks, as I always say at the end of my show, in a world where you could be anything, so please be kind and shine your light bright because if we shine our light bright and if we are to be kind, we're kind to each other, how much better this world would be, but it starts with us. It starts with you, the individual. So be kind, shine your light bright, and you will hear me chat again soon. This is Betsy Wurzel, your host of Chatting with Betsy on Passionate World Talk Radio. Bye-bye.